In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to take a model and position it within a dished shape. We're going to focus on how to use the multiply combine mode as part of your setup, and this will ensure that the model in the dish doesn't stick out above your material surface. Then we'll finish the demonstration by looking at some of the things that are important when calculating a toolpath for a dished or recessed model. So this is what we're aiming for, but let's start off by making a new file. So let's come up to file and close. Okay, so let's look at creating our new file. So we'll come up to create a new file. And this time we're gonna have a single sided job. We're gonna have a width of 10 inches, a height of eight inches, a thickness of 0.75 inches and our units are in inches. Our Z0 position will be off the top of the material surface. Our XY datum position will be in the bottom left-hand corner. And for this scenario, the modeling resolution can actually be set to high. That'll be sufficient for this uh, tutorial. So let's click OK. Okay, so now we need to have a look at creating a vector ellipse to define where we like our dish to be. So let's go ahead and draw an ellipse. So if you come up here and click on draw ellipse, now I want it to start at x0 and y0. Our width is going to be nine and our height is going to be seven inches. I'm just gonna click create and we'll close out the form. You can now see we've got our ellipse in the bottom left-hand corner, but we want it in the center of our material. So let's just click on it and click uh, hit F9 on your keyboard. And there we are, it's now in the center of our workspace. Now I know that I want to put some content in the middle of this dish and to do so, I'm actually going to import a model. So I'm going to come over to our modeling tab and I'm going to click on this button here to import a component or 3D model. So at this stage, you will locate your uh, V11 tutorial files for creating a dish recess and you'll see that it contains a horse head model and we'll need that for the moment. So let's just double click on that. As you can see, it's imported our horse head into the bottom left hand corner here. And just like our dish, if we click on it and select it and click F9 on the keyboard, it will place it into the center of our workspace. Now at this stage, it will be good to look at what the horse head actually looks like in the 3D view. And to do that, we can actually tile our view. So if you come to the top here and click on this button just here, which is the arrange views vertically as non overlapping windows, you'll see that we now have our 2D view on the left and our 3D view on the right. And of course you can click on this and you can drag this around to manipulate it to have a look uh, at this horse head whichever way you would like. But for now, I'm gonna reset that to the Z axis. And I'm just gonna have a look at now, uh, adjusting some of the properties of the horse head. Now I know in this scenario that I want my horse head to fill up as much of the disc as, as possible, but also to leave an ample border around the edge as well. Now I can do that by holding down shift on the uh, keyboard. And if I come over to one of our handles here and click on it and drag this out, I can, uh, adjust the horse head side this this way. But also, if I happen to know the exact size I wanted my horse head to be, I could just come over to the transform objects and click on the select object size. Now in this case, I know I want my horse head to be 7.7 .7 inches. I will keep the uh, link X and Y checked because I do want that to happen. So we'll automatically link the X and Y values and I do want my auto scale Z to be on as well. So let's go ahead and click apply. And you'll notice now that it's scaled up the horse head to use the most of the space in this uh, dish that we're going to create and leave an ample border around the edge. So with that said, let's close out this form and now let's have a look at creating our dish. So the next thing we wanna look at is how deep we want to make our dish and how much shape height we have to work with when it comes to our actual horse head itself. So I know that I have three quarter inch piece of material and I want my dish to be half an inch deep. So I need my horse head to fit within that half an inch. And actually what I want is to be slightly less than half an inch um, so that we'll avoid any flat spots. So because I don't want the horse head to stand proud of the top of the material, I want that to fit within that half an inch. So to do that, we can look at some of the component properties. So if we make sure our whole size is still selected, and we're just gonna come over to our component properties over here and just click on this button just here. Okay, so as you can see, currently our shape height is set to 0.3. So I'm actually gonna change that to 0.43. 
and I'm actually going to add a base height. Now, the reason I'm going to add a base height is to give the horse some definition. So just to show you what's happening here, if I just click on our 3D preview over here and just drag it up a little bit, keep an eye around the neck area here, and you'll see that when I add a bit of a base height here, so I'm going to put it to 0 0.05, it just raises the horse very, ever slightly off the bottom of the dish. So if you imagine when we come to cut the dish later, the horse will be just, just proud of the bottom of the dish there. Uh, and that looks pretty good to me. Now, an important thing to note is, if you add these two values together, you get just under half an inch. It'll be 0 0.48, which is just under half an inch, which gives us a little bit of room to play with when it comes to making any adjustments because we know this is now within that half an inch uh, height that we spoke of earlier. So we're making sure that our horse is not proud of the top of our material. Okay, so that was pretty good. So I'm just going to reset my view over here. I'm just going to close out this form. Now, one of the things we like to show people is that when you're actually creating a dish on your own and to help you visualize what's going on, you should add in a zero plane as the zero plane not only helps you visualize things better, but helps the software give you a better recessed dish edge uh, because it will know where the dish actually touches the surface of your material. So to do that, we're just going to come up to the top here and we're just going to use this button here to click on add a plane component with zero height covering the model. And now you'll notice that in the 3D view, you have this zero plane in the background here behind the horse. But in the 2D view, uh, currently you don't see anything. But importantly, you do have your zero plane over here in your component tree. Now, when you actually import the zero plane, the reason why it is not displayed in the 2D view is because the layer is actually turned off. If you come up to the very top here and click on your layers tab, you'll notice that we have a zero plane layer and it's been turned off automatically. And that's because if you turn it on, it actually covers your entire worksheet. So to be able to see your vectors and your 3D content clearly, it's turned off automatically, but it is still there. But you can still see it in the 3D view and you can still see it in your component properties. And it's important to note that it will help us when it comes to uh, our dish later, because it will give us uh, a better idea of what's actually happening when we create our dish. So with that said, let's click off the layers tab now and let's have a look at actually creating our dish. Now, at this stage, if your software supports 3D modeling, then that's perfect. Uh, if not, then you could do the same by importing a 3D clip art, if you'd like, that's actually a dish shape and then sizing it appropriately to what you need. So let's look at making our dish. If we go ahead and click on the ellipse here and we come up to the top and we're going to click on create a shape from vector outlines. OK, so at this stage, we want it to be this curved profile here at the top. So we want to make sure this is selected. We want the angle to be 30 degrees. We can enter that here. You can also use a slider on the right hand side here. We don't want to add a base height. And in terms of our height, we want it to scale to an exact height. We want it to be 0 0.5 inches because we know that is the height of our dish. If you recall earlier, we were referring to our horse head fitting inside that 0 0.5 inches. That is referring to the dish height that we will have. And I want to make sure that this is subtracted from the previous components and I'll give it a name. I'll call it dish and let's just hit apply. Okay, so with that, let's close out our form and I'm going to take a closer look at our 3D view. So I'm just going to maximize this. And you'll notice now that you have this kind of hazy color here. We have the darker color here as well on our horse. Now what this hazy color is actually representing is our modeling plane. So the surface of our material. So that means that any of these darker portions here, like little bits of the mane here, the ears, the eye, the uh, front of the mouth and nose for the horse on the neck, these are actually proud of the surface of your material. Uh, so we'll need to actually address these to make sure that these fit inside the dish or underneath that modeling plane and don't stand proud because this will lead to flat spots. So when you come to actually machine it, these will end up just being flat spots and that's not what we want. So let's have a look at some different ways that we can address this problem. So one of the ways we could actually address this issue is to actually change the geometry of the dish that we have made and make it a little bit deeper and scale down our horse head uh, just a little bit and that might actually fix it. So let's just try that. So let's just go back to our tiled view for the moment. Okay, so let's first make sure our dish is now not selected in our component tree. And we're going to make sure our ellipse is still selected. I'm going to come up to our modeling tools and create a shape from vector outlines. And we're going to choose the same uh, shape profile for the curve profile, but we are going to change the angle. We're going to, we're going to make it to 60 
degrees. And we're going to keep all the other settings the same. Apart from this one, we're going to make it make sure this is subtract. And we're going to call this one dish two. And we'll hit apply. And there we are. You can see our dish is now made in our 3D view. So I'm just going to close this out for the moment. And now what I need to do is actually adjust the size of the horse head. So to do that, I need to make sure my horse head model is actually selected in my component tree. Now, importantly, before I resize this, you'll notice that the ellipse we have here is still selected and that's denoted by this dashed pink line we have around our ellipse. So we want to make sure that's not selected. So let's click off of that. Just select our horse model. As you can see, the ellipse has gone back to just a black line indicating that it's no longer selected. Click on our horse and we can hold shift on our keyboard and we can just click on one of the handles, hold it down with the left mouse click and just slowly shift that down to a more appropriate size and there we go you can see now that we don't have any of the flat spots that we did before and our horse head fits nicely within our dish now that looks pretty good that looks pretty nice but we have compromised our actual layout a little bit uh, one is that we have sized down our horse's head and that way when we go to cut it we might lose some of the detail that we had in it uh, and also that our dish is now a little bit deeper, which means it now also gets deeper quicker. So that change in geometry might actually put a little bit of stress on your tool uh, as we're cutting out the material. So let's take a look at another option that we could uh, have or we could use uh, to fix the issue of the flat spots and the horse head uh, standing proud of our plane. Okay, so to do that first, let's go ahead and delete our dish two so we can right click and delete you can also just select it and hit delete on your keyboard and with that I'm going to make sure our original dish is turned on and we're going to select our horse model and we're now going to size it back up to its original size which if you recall was 7.7 .7 inches I'm going to hit apply and there we are let's close that out now we're back to where we were earlier so now we can have a look at our next step of uh, adjusting this uh, horse head to fit inside the dish in another uh, methodology. Okay, so what we're actually going to do now is to uh, use the originally created dish and horse head model and fit the horse head nicely inside of our dish using one of our combined modes uh, called multiply. Now, multiply works in just the same way as all of our other combined modes do. Uh, when we add a component to another component, the pixels of the first component are added on top of the other pixels. So the result is the addition of adding those two pixel heights together. When it comes to using a multiply, then what happens is the pixels are multiplied together. So if you have a zero pixel height, it's multiplied against another pixel height and you get zero. And if the pixel height is one and you multiply it by another pixel height, then the pixel height stays at one or the same original height. So to do that, we're going to need to slightly adjust the way we have our component set up and we're going to have to add in a couple more levels. So let's have a look at our component tree. Okay, so first I'm actually going to rename this level. So if I just click on it and right click, I'm going to choose rename level and I'm going to call this one models in dish. And then I'm going to actually create a new level. So I'm just going to right click, insert a new level and this level I'm actually going to call multiply. So let's click on that, right click again, rename level, let's call it multiply. And finally, one more level. So right click again, insert a new level. And we're going to call this one dish shape. And that looks great. Now, now I need to have a look at moving some of these uh, components around. So I want to keep my horse head model under the models and dish, but I do want to make sure my zero plane dish are in the dish shape. So I need to click on one of those. So if you right click on it, sorry, if you left click on it, hold shift, left click on the dish as well, and then drag those up to the level you're gonna put them under. And there we are, they're now in the correct level. Okay, so now we need to uh, take a copy of the dish and zero plane and put them in the multiply level of our component tree. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can actually just right click on these and choose to duplicate them. And then with your new duplicates, you can uh, 
hold down shift, click on them and drag them down to multiply, similarly, similarly to how we just did in regards to moving the dish in the zero plane up to the dish shape level. Or you, what you can do is you can actually click on dish, hold shift, click on zero plane, and then hold control on your keyboard and then drag these down to multiply and it'll actually create a copy of them. As you can see, you've got dish one and zero plane one there um, ready for use. And with that, I'm gonna now turn off our dish shape uh, components. I'm gonna turn off our models and dish. And now we're gonna have a closer look at our multiply layer. Let's just click off that so we can see the dish clearly. Uh, so right now our dish is in the negative, so that's not gonna help with our multiplication. So uh, what we're gonna do is look at our dish and we're gonna right click on it. And we're gonna change the combine mode to add rather than subtract. So now that we've changed it to add, we're gonna look at the actual shape height of this. And uh, right now, if we go up to our component co uh, properties for our selected component, which is the dish, you can see it's at a shape height of 0.5 inches as we originally set. But I'm actually gonna change this to one. Now it's important to note here, it wouldn't matter if it's inches or millimeters. At this stage, it's just gonna treat it as a unit when it comes to the multiplication. And as you can see, now what it's done is it's taken a height of zero at the very edge of our dish to one when it gets to the center of our dish. So it will be one inch high over here. Okay, so let's just close this out now. And what we're gonna do is actually change the level to be a combined mode of multiply. Okay, so what we're gonna tell our software to do is that anything in the level below this, we're gonna multiply it by what we see here in our composite model. So now we don't see anything right now because it's set to multiply, but we know that the edge of this dish is at zero and the top uh, is at one. So, and all the surface out here is zero because we have our zero plane uh, in here as well. Um, so that's all gonna be zero. So to make sure that we can actually see what's going on uh, and what's gonna happen, we're gonna turn off our multiplier layer for a second, and we're gonna turn on our uh, models and dish layer so we can see our horse head model. Now with that in the 3D view, I'm actually gonna put it on its side, and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. So now I'm gonna turn on my multiply layer. Now, if you keep an eye on the 3D preview here, you'll notice the, the change in our model. Now you'll notice what's happened here is that it's multiplied it so that it's now tapering down from the center because we've got that one inch height there and tapering down to the side. So if I turn off the multiply layer, you'll see it goes back to what it was with that base height. And if I turn it back on again, you'll see that it's now uh, tapering down so that this should now fit nicely within our dish. Now, another thing that's important to note here is that we had used a copy of our original dish. So the geometry uh, of it is the exact same. Uh, and that's important for this to work. So if we turn back on our uh, dish shape now, and we look down from above, you can now see that the horse head fits nicely inside of our dish and nothing is proud of the material. Now, if we turn off our multiplier layer, you'll see what happens. The horse head now has some parts that will stand proud and unfortunately be flat uh, when you come to machine it. But if we turn it back on, it now all fits nicely within that dish with nothing standing proud of our material surface. And again, if I just move it this way, and if I turn off our multiplier layer, you'll see that it stands proud of the dish. You can see it quite clearly here. You can see it curving out. And there we are, if we multiply it, it doesn't do that anymore. Now now we can look at some of the composition of our uh, components. So if I just reset the view, and let's say you wanna move the horse head around a little bit. So let's just click on our horse head model, make sure that's selected. And I'm just gonna move this. So I'm just gonna click on it and drag it around here. I'm just gonna move it so the head's still inside the dish, but the neck is slightly protruding. So let's just have a look at that. And there we go. Now, what you'll notice is that the uh, anything that is outside of our dish here has been multiplied by zero. Uh, so it has been effectively cropped. So you won't see that um, sticking out of the top of the surface of your material. And that looks great. Now, it's important to keep in mind that when you uh, change the shape of your model, let's say you change um, 
the size of your model again here. So let's say you made the horse head slightly bigger, for example, and then you change the composition of it. You may need to address any flat spots because it may change when you change the shape eye of it. So just something to keep your eye on. If you're playing around with the composition of it, uh, depending on where you place the model, uh, you may have some flat spots that you may need to adjust when you actually change the model or when you scale it up. Now, if you wanted to ever change some of the content within our dish, we can do that by bringing in a new model. Uh, make sure we size it correctly and make sure that the shape height is correct as well. And that will just fit in there nicely as we currently have with our horse head here. So we could demonstrate that by going down to our models and turning off our horse head model for the moment. We're gonna come back up to import a component or 3D model. I'm just gonna bring in our horse head model. And there we are, We've, you can see it's in the bottom left hand corner. I'm just gonna click on it, hit F9 on our keyboard to bring it to the center. And I'm now gonna just move it about a little bit uh, and place it where I want it to go. And I'm also gonna adjust the height of it again. So let's make sure that we go to component properties. I'm gonna change our shape height to 0.43, a base height of 0.05. And I actually am gonna move this down to our models in dish layer. So the multiplication can take effect. And then I'm quite happy with that. And I'm actually gonna make a copy of this one as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this format for the moment. I'm gonna make another copy of our horse head over here. So the way I can do that is if I click on it, hold control, click on it again and drag. You'll notice I now have another horse head on the screen. What I selected, if I hit H on the keyboard, it'll flip it horizontally. I can then take that and position it in a place that's more appropriate. So let's say I wanna move this horse head just down a little bit over here. And um, we're just gonna put this one just above it, just over here. So let's just try and sneak that in a little bit. I'm gonna just adjust the size of this one just a little bit by holding shift, grabbing one of the handles, sizing that down just a little bit so I can try and get most of it in there. There we are, that looks pretty good to me right now. And again, I'm gonna adjust the component properties for this, make sure our horse head copy is selected, which is denoted by the one here next to the horse head model. Come up to our component properties. And again, make sure it can fit within our uh, half inch dish. So 0.43 and we're gonna go for 0.05. And we're just gonna close that down now. And as you can see, it's now put both of our horse heads into our uh, dish uh, quite nicely. And so that's an easy way that you can add in some more uh, models or change some of the uh, content that you have inside of your dish if you ever would like to do so. Now, if you did wanna take a look at this without this kind of hazy effect here, you can just come up to the top here and click on view. And you wanna uncheck the option here for draw a modeling plane. And there we go. Now you can have a look at it without that haziness to it there as well. There we are. Now, let's just go back up and turn that on for the tutorial purposes. So let's just come back up. Let's turn it back on. Again, you just click on Draw Modeling Plane and that will turn it back on. Now, for now, let's just go ahead and turn off our new models and turn back on our original model. So we can have a think about what we're gonna do when it comes to now tooling our uh, horse head within our dish. Before we do that, let's make sure we save our progress. So let's come up to File, Save As, and we're gonna call this one uh, Dish 3D Modeling. And there we are, now we have our uh, file saved for later use as well. Okay, so now we can look at now running some tooling over our dish. So let's pop over to our toolpath tab. And as usual, before we create any toolpaths, we wanna to make sure that our material setup is correct. So we're gonna come up to our top here and click on set. And we're gonna check our settings for our material setup. Now we're using a dish composite model here to cut inside the top of our material. So there are some things that we need to keep into consideration. So first of all, let's look at our thickness, which is 0.75. Our XY datum is in the bottom left-hand corner. 
uh, Z0 is off of the material surface. And that's important because we need to have an accurate thickness of our material. And we're going to make sure that our model is pushed all the way up to the top of the material there. Uh, there shouldn't be any gap. Uh, so we're, make, we're going to make sure that our model is pushed all the way to the top of the material. So that way, when we come to cut out the edge of our dish, uh, we're going to have a nice transition between our dish and the top of our material. In terms of our rapid Z gaps, I'm just going to change that here to 0.5. And I'm going to change this to 0.25, taking into uh, consideration that my current machine will use these parameters. And I'm also going to change my uh, Z gap above material to 0.5 as well. And of course, these will change depending on what machine you're running and what setup you have. But with that, I'm happy. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now in a lot of cases when we cut 3D content, uh, we should be using a 3D roughing pass and a 3D finishing pass. But because we put this horse head inside of a dish, um, there may not be a need for a roughing pass. And in our case, with the machine that I currently have set up, I'm pretty confident that we can cut it with just a finishing pass, as long as we follow a couple of basic rules. So if we come up to our finishing pass here, if we just click on this button just here, uh, we're going to have a look at some of our settings so we can have a look at making a toolpath for our dish. So we're going to use an eighth inch ball nose. We're going to make sure that our machine limit boundary is set to selected vectors. And we're going to choose the vector over here that we originally used to create our dish. If you noticed, I've got this selected here. Uh, and in this case, we're not going to use an offset strategy. And that's because with the offset strategy, the tool will plunge down to the center of our ellipse and start cutting outwards. And we're putting a lot of pressure on both sides of our tool there uh, and a lot of load on the tool. And that could potentially break our cutter depending on what we're machining. So in this case, we're actually going to use a, a raster strategy uh, and we're going to start on the outside. And what's going to happen is it's going to slowly start going back and forth uh, through our ellipse and that will create a slow drop into our dish, which will only put um, a load on one side of our cutter at a time. And that will slowly work its way across uh, the dish and that will come out quite nicely for us. We're going to leave our raster angle at zero and I'm just going to call this one 3D finish, but I'm, actually, I'm going to put on the uh, tool size on the end of it here. So 0.125 or you could also use uh, one eighth to indicate one eighth um, inch end mill. But in this case, we're gonna go for one, two, five, point one, two, five, and I'm just gonna hit calculate. Okay, so now we can look at running our toolpath preview, but before I do, I'm actually gonna change the name of my toolpath, because if you notice, I've put the uh, size of the tool, but I haven't put what type of tool it is. So I'm just gonna right click it and click rename. And on the end of it, I'm gonna put ball nose end mill. So I'm gonna put BEM, which stands for ball nose end mill just to make it a bit more clear when I come to machine that. So with that, let's preview our selected toolpath. And there we are, you can see that our strategy when we used our raster went bottom to top, slowly going down the dish and up and creating this lovely finish that we've got here. As you can see the horse head is nice and detailed and sits nicely within our dish and that looks great. So with that, I can go ahead and save the file now. So I'm come up, gonna come up to file, save as, I'm going to call this one Horsehead Toolpass, and I'm just going to click on Save. Yes, I'll re overwrite my existing file because this is the latest version of the file now. And with that, I'll just maximize our view. And there we are, there is our finished dished recess. As you can see, we created our dish. We managed to adjust some of the issues we found with the horse head when we imported it in, got rid of some of the flat spots, and created a great looking project. Now, you can apply these techniques to any future projects that you would like to make on your own. And please feel free to look at other tutorials that also cover some of these in more depth, such as our carved dish recess tutorial that you can find in the links below. But for now, that concludes our tutorial. And as usual, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.